What's the good word, Josh? Your boy DKB here. So let's get a little cheeky here, right? The day after we get a huge win over the Houston Texans, legit playoff opponents, <clears throat> and they had a young phenom rookie in CJ Stroud who was actually leading the league in passing yardage, which that's not everything, but still, it's pretty notable, especially for a rookie, um, and we completely shut them down, right? Zach Wilson had the game of his life, um, and, and it sparked some things, but... During the press conference, Robert Sala, and I'm paraphrasing all of this, but he was essentially asked by a reporter, um, there's trade rumors out there that the New York Jets and Zach Wilson uh, will be parting ways. Did this game change anything? And Robert Sala's answer was essentially, I want to focus on New York, but hey, uh, anything's possible, right? And it got me thinking. That I haven't heard a lot of people talking about this, but it's kind of flown under the radar that that's a, a pretty open admission that the New York Jets were uh, pretty much, I would say, heavily bought in to the idea that Zach Wilson wasn't going to be on this roster next year. Otherwise, why would you play with it, right? So we had the, the, the comments about anything's possible. He also ended up mentioning that that's more of a Joe Douglas uh, you know, conversation where at this point, when you see him default to another person, it's essentially because he doesn't want the, the truth to come out from him directly, right? Um, and, and, you know, fair play, whatever. Uh, maybe it's not his place to call it, you know, it being technical roster decisions. Who knows how that's working out, at least in, you know, terms of this season, right? But Nonetheless, it got me open to thinking about what the plans for the future actually will be, right? I've kind of uh, had it set in my mind for a little bit here that for as bad as Zach Wilson has looked, it, again, he's going to be on a cheap rookie contract. The worst case scenario is you have him on your roster as QB3 again next year. Um, I shouldn't say again, but you have him on your roster as QB3. Um, you try to see if you can drum up some kind of trade value. And so... The great news here is, is that Zach Wilson's performance against the Texans should reignite uh, a lot of creativity for any offensive coordinators out there that are suffering at the quarterback position uh, and see Zach Wilson as a multiple piece of clay that's been failed by um, a franchise that's used to scoring up quarterbacks, right? If we would just want to be, uh, you know, frank with it. Um, outside of that, though, what does 2024 and beyond actually look like for the New York Jets? So sitting aside anything that can happen with this season, right? And there's still a lot. I think uh, I think there's still the possibility that we finish with a winning record off the top of my head. I think it would be 9-8 and eight if we went out. Playoffs are technically still a thing for us, uh, especially if we can win against the Dolphins here uh, with the AFC at large struggling. But all of that aside, what is the future state of this team? Again, I, I've been kind of set in stone that – Zach Wilson was going to be on this roster, but seeing that Robert Sala has essentially said that's not really the case, and maybe things can change, right? We talked about it on Jet Fly Squad podcast. I had a poll out there. Actually, the I won't say the majority, but it was like 54 or 56% of you guys by the time we wrapped up. Um, actually thought that there was a world where Zach Wilson proves enough that he can save his career specifically with the New York Jets, right? Um, worst case scenario, what we're looking at right now is that we will part ways. Zach Wilson may go on to be a serviceable quarterback, uh, maybe even above average elsewhere, right? And it'll just be um, another one of those you know, moments in history, right? A footnote uh, in a long timeline of being a New York Jets fan where um, – we had another promising quarterback that we could do nothing with. Now, Geno Smith has been an exception uh, against the long line of quarterbacks, but you still have some people in play, right? Zach Wilson, could, could, uh, excuse me, Zach Wilson could go on to be great. Sam Darnold was already put in a great opportunity being with the 49ers. Um, Fitz Magic went on to do some pretty decent things elsewhere. Joe Flacco's having a lot of success with the Browns right now. So not all drafted guys, but just essentially some of the more recent quarterbacks that we had. Nonetheless, what does that mean for the New York Jets? We're coming up. Uh, we are already diving into draft season, right? You know, things may be on hold with how great people feel after this Texans win. But in large part, I've seen a lot of creators start shifting to draft content. Is a round one quarterback out of the question, right? At first, it didn't make a ton of sense to me, right? We have other needs. We need a, a, a suitable partner for Garrett Wilson. We need offensive line help like nobody's business. Um, and, and those will be the two top pressing needs for us, right? Um, but 
you've seen, take the Texans, for example, right? I've seen this article and kind of headline put out there quite a while. Two similar plans, two different results, right? Rookie quarterback, defensive-minded rookie head coach, new offensive staff in place, um, top pick quarterback. And it just so happens that C.J. Stroud was also number two. You've seen instant success with them where we instantly failed right out of the gate uh, for Robert Sala and Zach Wilson. <clears throat> and there's not a lot of stark differences either, right? It's just that, you know, they hit on a better draft class right out of the gate uh, than we did. We had to wait for Garrett Wilson, uh, you know, Gardner, Jermaine Johnson, etc. cetera. Um, but nonetheless, a round one quarterback, I don't think should necessarily be out of the picture. You've seen numerous examples now of guys that do have the mental, uh, you know, makeup and fortitude to go out there and succeed right out of the gate, right? And it is a huge change college to the pros all of the preparation that goes into place uh you know numerous pros have talked about the onslaught from the moment they decide they're hitting the draft up until they're drafted and then that literal entire first season right more games than you're used to playing in college wear and tear since you haven't actually had a break the entire time you've been prepping you've been taking visits you've been going through the combine uh you know the nfl draft day itself then flying to your new home uh getting used and acclimated to all the stuff there moving it's a ton of work um but we've seen it happen we've seen the success you could go out and potentially see uh, the Jets could still end up with a top 15 pick, right? Uh, a lot of people may be hoping for the tank. Uh, a lot of people uh, like myself would be excited for any wins we can gain along the way. But I think realistically, you still look at the top 15 pick. This is a, a loaded quarterback class at face value, right? Uh, a lot of statistical anomalies with a lot of the quarterbacks coming out. Um, you know, great performances, uh, all that good stuff, right? So you can kind of have your pick of the group uh, to a certain degree. Would it be worth going out there and getting a top-notch quarterback and then allowing him to sit behind an Aaron Rodgers for a year or two before you pass the torch, right? Uh, I think that's going to be the biggest question. Can you find a guy that you feel comfortable enough with outside of the first round? I think 100%. You've seen examples all across uh you know the board uh not only from just the numerous backup quarterbacks that have had to step into starting roles this year uh but of course other quarterbacks themselves right the brock purdy's of the world the jake brownings uh you know the cj strouds as we mentioned um who else do we have up there you, you know, your trey lance reclamation projects um that are still out there right so there, there's a, a lot of different avenues you can look at this from um i think Depending on who's on the board, I wouldn't be opposed to getting a round one quarterback. With that said, would it be the best use of roster management? Maybe not so much, right? I'd be just as happy uh, seeing whatever version of a uh, uh, Hendon Hooker type guy, right, in this year's draft class. If we can get him on day three, I'd be just as excited as if we get somebody like a Michael Penix or, a, you know, a... a uh, the, the LSU kid. Um, uh, but I don't know. It, it, it's a question I really just wanted to toss up in the air. Cause I wasn't quite sure where I wanted to go with this. What is going to be the future state of the New York jets? Essentially knowing that unless Zach Wilson does go on a barrage of elite gameplay here to end the season, he's not going to be on this roster next year. And so now you're talking about, uh, having to add, uh, it should have always been on the list, but backup quarterback, uh, but more essentially, it, it's more than a backup quarterback, right? You need a quarterback of the future. Who's taking the baton from Aaron Rodgers, right? I don't want to go from him to another veteran quarterback at some point like a Jacoby Brissett because we haven't had a plan in place. Who's going to take the baton from him? You still need that quarterback of the future. You need that running mate for Garrett Wilson. You need the offensive line talent. <clears throat> which between losing some guys in free agency, potentially uh, the injury histories that we have and stuff, you essentially still need not only a ton of starters, at least two to three. You also need the depth pieces that uh, we've also been missing this year due to more injuries. So it's a long list of stuff that we need, need to address on the offensive side. The tight end room is realistically the, the best set room going into next year, which I have no real complaints about, um, even between, uh, you know, the undrafted free agents and stuff that hopefully are developing behind the scenes. But 
I'll put it out there to you guys. Let me know what you think about this whole situation. Maybe I'm reading into it too much uh, about Zach Wilson or at least about Robert Sala admitting Zach Wilson won't be here. Uh, but let me know what you think. Uh, it, you know, Do you see it the same way I do? And what do you think our plan for the future should be? For this offseason, knowing that, or, uh, you know, am I crazy? For what it's worth, I said I was going to be cheeky in the beginning of the video. But uh, nonetheless, let me know what you think, and I'll catch you guys again. Peace. Yeah.